Toyota World Runners is proudly supported by Fireplace Performance, Western Driveline. This is my first trip back on the trails after putting 30 spline trail gear long fields in the front of the Yeti. So I was feeling pretty confident, super stoked to hit the trails, definitely wanted to test everything out. Beautiful day out here. And you're just gonna have to stick around to find out what kind of expensive problems I ran into today. Not the least of which being wedged so tightly in between two trees, I was pretty sure I was gonna either break a window or completely ruin a door. After breaking five berths in the last year, I was pretty confident that upgrading my burr fields and axle shafts to chromoly long fields was going to be the last real expensive fix that I was going to have to do. Turns out life is full of just more surprises and, you know, this happens to be an expensive hobby. Luckily I'm not wheeling a brand new vehicle, it's an old Toyota and I can wrench on it myself. So stick around to find out what kind of trouble we get up to today.
don't know if this turn is meant for trucks. <laughs> At this point, I knew I had got myself in a real pickle because I wasn't going to be able to reverse back up this hill, and getting between these two trees meant pretty much an inevitable body damage. This was also when I first started to notice that there was something funny going on in my front end. With my brand new long fields, everything was feeling kind of stiff and I was kind of thinking, oh, maybe the because the berths are brand new, everything just hasn't get worn in yet. Nope, wasn't that. I had the truck in two wheel drive for most of this maneuver just because steering was so difficult. I'm the biggest truck that's ever been through there. Yeah. <laughs> well, miraculously, thanks to some careful spotting and also having the narrow two-wheel drive body, I was somehow able to get through these two trees without any body damage. Also, thanks to my bumpers and rock sliders. So, that was a win. Bryce was smart enough to learn from my route finding mistake, and he took the same way down that we went up. So there's something uh, something going on with your truck? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm gonna try and back up and then see if it gets less wet. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're good. Keep coming. Yeah. We're good. Is it out? Yeah. Uh, we can get but it now your out. front tire's on it, but Just yeah. Turn to the left. Yeah, there you go, you're off. Perfect. So, what actually was going on with the front of my truck? Well, I didn't find out until I was back on pavement and realized that the entire front end was completely locked up and I could barely steer. Specifically when the driver's hub was locked. Well, it was clear I had to pull everything apart. I didn't think I had just blown a brand new long field, so obviously something else was going on. 
and is this. I blow in the diff. Yep. Number three. And I honestly think the blown diff is what happened in our previous videos, if you remember when I blew two Burfields at the same time. I reckon the diff blew and that's what caused the Burfields to break. This is the carrier of the, the one that was in the front end, the one that blew. I already pulled it apart and this was the center pin. See that? <laughs> it's supposed to look like this and it, it sheared into three pieces. That center pin goes right through here on the diff. It was right through the middle. This is a four-cylinder carrier. The four-cylinder carriers use a single pin, which I think is a weaker system than the V6. I'll show you. So with a V with a V6 carrier, there's actually four. There's four pins. You can't really see because the ring gear is in the way, but there are four pins that go through. <laughs> Pretty upset about that, honestly. After you know, brand new long fields and everything, and uh, it's the price to pay to play. Unfortunately, um, I didn't even think to look at the uh, to look at the diff when when I was replacing the burr fields. It didn't even occur to me that that could be the issue. And I think specifically, there's a problem with these lunchbox lockers in a four-cylinder carrier because they only use this single pin. If you're gonna run a four-cylinder diff I would recommend a welded or a Detroit locker that replaces the entire carrier because the four-cylinder discs with these lock rights I mean I'm just speaking from experience I've broken three of them now and it's not because of 529s it's not because the lock rights a bad locker um, I'm 100% attributing this to uh, the single pin you know I've had all my discs set up professionally and that that is a key getting your discs set up professionally will protect your investment anyway I've now had to buy new diffs again but honestly it's been super draining uh, to be completely transparent it's been really draining re wrenching on this thing like spending so much money just to get out on the trails when really I should be focusing on on building our Chinook because we're leaving in like gosh like eight months or seven months or something and I keep having to fix the Eddie just to keep making content getting out on the trails and you know I love going wheeling it clears my head but you know, not when I keep breaking my truck. So fingers crossed, hopefully, God willing, this is the last thing that I have to replace in the Yeti for a while. That's what I'm dealing with. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, smash that like button, and we'll catch you in the next one. Another thing before you go, we got a bunch of sweet decals on our website. So head over to toyotaworldrunners.com, grab yourself a new deco for your rig or for your water bottle and help support our channel because gas ain't getting any cheaper. Thanks guys.